Everybody's Reading is um, Leicester's annual festival of books and reading, taking place in October each year, and its objective is to get every primary school child reading before they leave primary school. The festival was set up because we wanted there to be a community element to the Whatever It Takes project, which was focused on children in schools, but we wanted to involve their parents in the local community. But the festival is underpinned by an understanding that to get primary school children, children reading, we have to get everybody reading, because children grow up reading when they grow up in a literate society. So it really is about getting everybody reading, from children to adults to older people. So we decided that the obvious way of doing that was to have a festival that focused on reading but was actually about reading in the community. And this year's festival, for example, uh, the theme of it is One Leicester, A Thousand Stories, and we've set up story cafes to get local people to write their own stories, their own experiences, and actually bring some of Leicester into the festival so that it's very much our festival as a city. In my app, it was my name on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. I wouldn't know you up there. It's like talking. Oh, I think everybody's reading is absolutely fantastic because uh, it's about promoting reading, it's about encouraging reading, and it's about enabling people to uh, to realise that through reading they can enter new worlds, that they can expand their imagination, that they can expand the opportunities for, for themselves and it really is uh, something that uh, provides a focus uh, on the skill of reading and the opportunities of reading offers. I think it's a very exciting opportunity to, to engage people in reading and to actually sell the idea of it, get it across. It's only when you meet authors and uh, you get involved with, with the whole he hearing stories, if you like, that I think people really understand how stimulating reading fiction is. I mean, I just think it's a really good opportunity to get people sort of involved in, in reading and writing and in activities that perhaps, you know, in the normal sort of run of things, they might pass them by. I mean, particularly for something like today, it's been an excuse to get sort of, you know, several hundred kids into, into a library, which maybe usually they might not have done. And hopefully they've gone away with quite a positive image of, you know, what libraries are. And also... Uh, hopefully quite a positive image of, of, of what authors are like. I think the, the, the major benefit for Leicester is the fact that we have a project which is encouraging young people not only to read but to understand and to experience this idea that reading for pleasure is fun. Um, today we've had young people writing their own stories as well and they've been using this public space that we have, this fantastic building and anything that encourages people to use the library is also good for Leicester because it's a great resource and we need it. The library, every library, they have so many amazing functions and unfortunately they've been going through a bit of a bad time. So to have something that promotes literacy, libraries, reading, for me particular as an author, uh, but as also as the father of an 11-year-old who's going through the education system, I think that libraries are vital. I think that learning and reading for pleasure is vital. So this project sort of encompasses all of that and I think we should be proud of it as a city. The diary of life is pre-planned before the knowing of our conscience. So much apathy towards spiritual fulfillment that we reluctantly accept the society they give to us. I know my destiny because I know my history. I know my language originates from Sanskrit, yet that's the language that created Greek, Latin and English. The festival took place over nine days in October, from the 1st of October to the 9th. And we just took over the city. Um, there were events happening. In, in very diverse venues from the Curve and places like the Phoenix where we are here to um, tiny venues like the Crumbling Cookie Cafe and Kayal restaurants and Red Tent and Bar on Bock Pocklington's Walk. So really stuff happened everywhere.
play mainly jazz and improvised music. So um, jazz is a is around about a century old, and and I get to play a, an entire span of you know the whole span of that is from the very early stuff to the really really modern stuff, and I get to work with lots of different people in lots of different ways. We're we're basically like a listening trio, so we create music spontaneously, you know, for the people that are there. That's 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 what we mainly do. Um, connected with that, we have a larger sextet called Heralds, um, which main centres around my, my compositional work and my ideas of kind of working with composition and improvisation and words and scripts and reading. But one of the main things that attracted me to the commission was that that you know I used to be a librarian and and you know I, I love reading and but but part of the job is also about loving enabling people to access books. The, the Library Act has is, is always, is always been, um, has always pushed forward the fact that everybody should have a universal, universal access, right to access books. I keep a camcorder handy the apocalypse, I can beat all your asses in battleships, I like my nerds online, my steak well fried, I make paper molecular structures in my spare time, so I'm a textbook nerd, I'm an Olympic napper because I'm a skinny white middle class boy girl rapper, thank you. This is actually the Urban Slam Championships and uh, we have so far about 11 contestants that's gone on and they have performed some absolutely mind-blowing outstanding material and they can perform anything from say um, rap to poetry to prose, uh, fiction, storytelling, whatever, as long as it's a good performance and it's quality. Yeah? And it's also to celebrate not only National Poetry Day, but also the Everybody's Reading Festival, which is why it's being held in the library, so people can come in that may not have been in the library before, look around, and hopefully it will attract them to come back. Um, it's been good, it's been really good, because in the workshop, there are so many people that look so different. It's like every element of society came to the workshop, and I do one exercise, which I call, sort of labelled community poetry, where everyone writes one line on a sheet, and then they stand up, leave the sheet there, move one to the left, and then by the time you get to the bottom, everybody's contributed to everyone's poem. And it's beautiful, because when they read it off, it does all sound like one voice. It's, it works pretty well. But hopefully, having their material, um, giving their material an audience, getting that respect, getting that appreciation, getting that outlet to voice their opinion, um, to show people that there is more than one way that you can express yourself, um, to show people that elements of society that aren't necessarily listened to at the, at, you know, <laughs> every day do have a voice and an intelligent one at that. And this is what this um, event represents, really. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a writer. I write uh, teenage fiction, young adult fiction. So I, I started writing a couple of years ago. I've now published four books. And today I've been doing a series of workshops with, with a variety of children from sort of across the city of Leicester. Uh, and I've been doing some work on children's ideas of what it means to, to belong to a gang and think about the positive and the negative aspects of belonging to a gang. Because my first book, which is a story about lads getting involved in football hooliganism, sort of obviously touches on the gang, uh, the gang theme. So I read them some extracts from that and then got them to think about the reasons why children perhaps might be attracted towards gangs and the reasons why this might not be perhaps the most intelligent course of action. Well, I would just like to say, I would just like to say a really big thank you to all of the Everybody's Reading funders and partners and patrons and audience members and everyone really. For me, hopefully, it's a um, something that we now establish and do every single year for a long time. I think the fact that every year for me if a group of kids can come in and experience what they've experienced today um, that would be a fantastic thing so I think if we can have this first few years of it as a legacy that goes on that people keep running it's brilliant we need to celebrate the city a lot more we need to celebrate our young people a lot more and this gives them the opportunity to express themselves and for young people to express themselves it's, a, it's one of the key things that I think that they they need in order to become um, to fulfill their potential. I would hope that it's going to get bigger and, and better, but that 
primarily it's going to have more people in the local communities actually taking an active part in producing the things that we, that we read uh, and producing books about Leicester that we haven't had before because really engaging the community in telling their own tales is a key way of promoting literacy because once we have those tales to read then we take them back into the community. Well I think it has enormous potential uh, and I think that um, it's something that um, we can build on, we can see grow and we can see expand and uh, I very much hope that I and my colleagues will be part of helping it to grow and to expand and to become even more exciting. It says behind me, everybody is reading. Why is that a pregnant comment? Because ev Simply because everybody is not reading. This is why that takes on special life. And many writers have said that what makes them write is reading. Reading gives that constant nourishment. So when young writers say, I don't read because, you know, I don't want to be influenced, well, that's a no-go. Read, read, read. So I think overall the 2011 Everybody's Reading Festival will be seen as a great success. Um, I just need to have a sleep now, really, to recover from it. But um, roll on next year, we're really looking forward to it.